Ever since man lifted his face to the sky and conceived the idea of flight, he's dreamed of a flying machine that would give him absolute mastery of the new elements, the air. He imagined a machine that would rise straight up with no forward movement, a machine that would hover motionless or travel at any desired speed in the direction desired and which would come straight down gently to land on the very spot from which it took off. Now we have the helicopter which does all these things. Let's meet the man who did the pioneering in America, developing the helicopter, Igor Sikorsky. A long time ago, a great man had the idea for something like a helicopter. His name was Leonardo da Vinci. And here is a sketch of his flying machine in which he intended to use the basic principle of a lifting air screw. It was said that Leonardo da Vinci experimented with air screws like that. A number of other people tried to build helicopters. I myself attempted to build two in 1909 and 1910. And here is my 1910 helicopter. When this machine failed to fly, I returned it to more conventional aircraft design. But I never dropped the idea of the flying machine that could go straight up in the air and could land gently with no forward speed. And there you have the difference between the helicopter and the aeroplane. Let's take a look out of the window toward the flying field. An aeroplane must have plenty of room to take off and to land. Both operations require forward speed. Everyone is familiar with this fact by now, I believe. But let's look at the helicopter. See how the helicopter not only takes off vertically, but does so with no forward motion. In fact, the chief characteristics of the helicopter are its ability to rise and to descend vertically, to hover absolutely motionless in the air, and to travel at any desired speed. These qualities have captured the people's imagination, for there is no doubt that the world's imagination has been captured. Sometimes we think just a little too much at this stage of the development of the helicopter. There is much research and experimentation yet to be done before the helicopter can be placed on the market. No one man can claim the credit for the development of the helicopter. The first really successful flight were made around 1937 by Fokke in Germany. They were followed by other flights. However, during the recent years, we had no news from Germany, and we do not know of any further success of this outstanding pioneer designer. When the time comes that helicopter could be offered for sale, the number of its uses will be almost unlimited. All sorts of inaccessible terrain would become available. New traffic rules and regulations would have to be worked out. We can visualize the helicopter being used for carrying mail, passenger, freight. We can further expect its extensive use for all kinds of emergencies, such as forest control, health, or medical assistance, and finally, we can expect its development for private use. One could hazard the prophecy that our ways of life would be changed just as they were when the automobile came into general use. Here are some other attempts that were made on the way of solution of the helicopter problem. This is a model produced by the Italian Forlanini around the year 1870. This is a man-carrying helicopter built by Dr. de Bortezat for the United States Army around uh, 1923. This is a machine produced by Breguet and flown in France around 1937. And this is a Fokker helicopter that was successfully flown around 37 in Germany. A number of other attempts 
as well as a considerable amount of scientific study has been made in various parts of the globe, gradually paving the way for the successful solution of this problem. After I became associated with the United Aircraft Corporation, I resumed my studies in the helicopter, and this time successfully. In the fall of 1939, we made the first flight with this machine. Now we are going to show you the moving picture record of some of these flights. Here are motion pictures of the historic moment in September 1939, when the Sikorsky helicopter was first flown. The machine stays close to the ground, but it is flying, and it did take off vertically, and it is under the control of the pilot. There were no rules or techniques for flying this primitive helicopter. Right now, as you watch, the pilot is discovering the rules. Note the crude appearance of this first Sikorsky helicopter. It's just an open framework with a 75 horsepower engine and with a pilot sitting out in the open. It looks about as crude as that first Wright Brothers airplane at Kitty Hawk in 1903. This scene, 36 years later, marks another Kitty Hawk, the Kitty Hawk of the Sikorsky helicopter. That pole sticking out in front was part of an experiment to find the center of gravity for this first helicopter. And perhaps you've noticed a weight dragging underneath the framework. It was put there to hold the flying machine down in case it decided to start upward to any considerable height. It might have done so. Nobody knew. Note also that the landing gear works on universal joints so that regardless of the direction this primitive helicopter might take on landing, the wheels would allow it to move in that direction. This was adventurous flying in a machine new to mankind. Time passed and the original crude helicopter developed into this more graceful machine you now see flying through the air like a great silver bird. This helicopter, the VS-300 by designation, employs inflated pontoons instead of wheels. With these pontoons, it lands with equal ease on any surface. It comes straight down under perfect control, turning as it descends under the now trained hand of the pilot until it settles on the water. The pilot signals his maneuvers. He goes forward, taxiing like a water sled. He goes backward in the reverse maneuver. How is it done? There's no readily apparent change in the aircraft's appearance. But watch the changing pitch of the rotors, those flickering blades determining the movement of this machine, which under expert piloting can be as whimsical as a whirling leaf in its flight through the air. Yes, there are times when you can see a helicopter flying and not be able to decide the course it is following through the sky it has conquered. It will be wonderful when some of us can own helicopters to give us the pleasure evident in this scene you have witnessed. But, as Mr. Sikorsky tells you, that time is ahead in the future. Here is an astonishing maneuver. The helicopter takes off backward. Now, this is not a camera trick, for the camera has not left the aircraft since it landed on the water to perform for you. Nonchalantly, the pilot turns around and flies forward and away. That was easy, you may say, with all that open water. But how would you like to try and pilot any kind of craft, even a boat in and out of this rocky inlet? There just isn't room to navigate between these rough banks and up the shallow little stream. But the helicopter goes in smoothly to land on a pool hardly big enough to be a duck pond. We watch the takeoff from another angle. The pilot is teasing the girl, lifting the machine a foot at a time. But that's actually just another way to demonstrate the controllability and stability of the aircraft. You'll see a further demonstration of these features in just a moment 
when the pilot accepts the girl's invitation to come down on the beach. You'll see how you might get food and clothing and medicine if you were stranded in some inaccessible spot. Just for fun, the pilot landed in the mouth of the inlet in order to show how easily he can lift the aircraft up over the bank, sideways, you notice, to approach the girl. She's holding up an iron ring. The helicopter comes forward, accurately spears the ring, and unconcernedly backs away. The girl, or you, could be stranded in some dangerous spot, and the helicopter just as easily could bring whatever might be needed for relief and hand it to you. Simple, isn't it? The same maneuver has been done repeatedly with large and small packages. Perhaps you've wondered where you'll park the helicopter you may own one day. A parking lot seems logical. Here we see the VS-300 snugly tucked in between some automobiles. How did it get there? The truth is it flew in. And if you don't believe it, watch this. Here is one of the most dramatic examples of the helicopter's ability to operate in restricted space. Please notice that the camera does not once leave the aircraft as it circles in a 360-degree shot. Please notice, too, that the parking lot is solidly lined with automobiles. When veteran pilots see the maneuver about to be carried out, they open their eyes wide, and their mouths even wider, and then they grin and say, doggone it, I still don't believe it. The helicopter returns and hovers over the space it occupied, which you just saw it leave. It returns, it hovers, and it settles down squarely in the middle. A better parking job than you usually do with your car. There just doesn't seem to be any space too small or too rough or too inaccessible for the helicopter. We want you to try and imagine an ordinary airplane attempting to land on the next spot we take you to. Here it is. A pile of empty boxes for airplane engines. The helicopter settles down comfortably, while the pilot looks around for another place to perch. While he's looking, we'll begin the story of this aircraft's further development. By now, perhaps we agree that the helicopter seems here to stay. What are we going to do with it? Well, there's a war on, with air power playing a most vital role in that war. The United States Army Air Forces have long recognized the potentialities of direct lift aircraft for military use. As soon as the Sikorsky helicopter had demonstrated that it was capable of sustained, controlled flight, all possible technical and financial support was provided towards its development as a military vehicle. The number of possible military applications would seem almost without end. There. The pilot has found the place he was looking for, a rooftop, which might be your office building. It's a perfectly good landing place for the Sikorsky helicopter. You park it on the ground with the automobiles, or you park it high in the air on a skyscraper. It's one and the same to this new aircraft. This is the beautiful valley of the Housatonic River. Look down at the foot of the rocky hillside. Just skimming the boulders and the shrubs comes the Sikorsky Army helicopter, the first built experimentally for the Army Air Forces. It's a two-place Army Sikorsky helicopter powered with a 185 horsepower engine and with an enclosed cabin as comfortable as the roadster you run around in. Out on a test flight, this Sikorsky Army helicopter soars on its way to a unique exhibition of flight control. This great bridge crosses the Housatonic River a few miles above Bridgeport, Connecticut. 
And crossing the bridge from a point high in the air is the Sikorsky Army helicopter. It's going under and over the bridge. Under and over. In a thrilling exhibition of controlled flight in dramatic surroundings. I wonder what the people in the cars on the bridge thought. Nobody has ever done this sort of thing with a helicopter before. A twisting, spiral, corkscrew flight that's a test of pilot and of machine both. Now the helicopter stops dead still in midair and stops in its tracks, so to speak, much more quickly than you could stop your automobile on the highway. It does so again. You can check with the running figure of the girl who keeps in motion while the helicopter stands still. An almost unbelievable example of flight control. A power off landing. Les Morris, chief test pilot for Sikorsky Aircraft, is going to answer the question which many people ask. What happens when your engine stops? He has turned the switch to cut off the engine. And the answer is that the big rotor automatically continues to revolve, freewheeling, you might say. And the aircraft will land gently with a little forward run, like the conventional airplane. Pilot Morris is gliding down, aiming a wheel at a handkerchief spread out on the grass. He's down, within a foot of the handkerchief, in a power-off landing. And the audience which witnessed his demonstration seems very appreciative. That's a tanker off in the distance. And we're going aboard her to witness an experiment which can develop into a specific example of wartime use of the helicopter. Here, Colonel H. Franklin Gregory of the United States Army Air Forces made the first helicopter landings in history on a vessel at sea. And now, Colonel Gregory takes off once again, the first time. The first time a takeoff was ever made from a ship at sea by a helicopter. This feat was made possible through the cooperation of the War Shipping Administration and the United States Army Air Forces. Remember, this ship is not an airplane carrier with a long, clear flight deck. It's a tanker in regular service. And for this experimental flight, a small landing platform was built amidships between the forward superstructure and a wire-stayed mast aft. In two days of trials, at least two dozen landings and takeoffs were made, all without any suggestion of accident or difficulty. The flights were made under varying weather conditions, some good, some bad. They were made with the ship standing still and with the ship moving at a top speed of 16 knots. They were made with the wind and against the wind, under every condition which a helicopter attached to a ship might have to face in the course of its work. It has been a problem to protect the convoy. There have been many ideas tried more or less successfully. The experimental flights you are seeing suggest that a solution may have been found through the use of helicopters on merchant ships. Of course, there still remains a great deal of work and experimentation before we'll have helicopters aboard our merchant vessels as standard equipment. But the trials showed great possibilities, and the interest they aroused may be surmised from the presence on board at the time of those gentlemen of obvious importance. Coming down the flying field are three helicopters, and here is another first time. For this is the first picture ever taken of helicopters flying in formation. Leading the flight is the original Sikorsky VS-300, followed by one of a small production lot. These are now being built for the Army Air Forces by Sikorsky. Still more are to be built under license by Nash Kelbinator. The other craft is the first experimental Army Sikorsky type. The spectacle of three of these helicopters hovering motionless in the air after a vertical takeoff is one not soon to be forgotten. And as they maneuver gracefully, 
almost unbelievably, you can visualize for yourself a score of military uses for these revolutionary aircraft. Let's see what might happen someday after the war is won. You come out of the grocery store, bread, milk, steak, yep, that's everything. Back to the parking lot where you keep your helicopter. Routine by now. Load up the luggage basket. Put on your coat. Oh, tip the boy. Just like the old days of automobiles. And take off for home. An honest day's work done. This is home. The missus calls the children. Betsy, Jenny, young Master Tony, and Curry the pooch. The missus tossed off a light laundry after lunch, just like every American housewife. About time for the man of the house to be coming home with the groceries for supper. Oh yes, there he is. He's coming in through the trees to land in his own backyard. Way out in the suburbs, miles from the office. But is it possible that he's going to land in this lovely but not very large space surrounded by trees, which ordinarily are considered flying hazards. Well, you see, nobody doesn't have to land. The missus strolls out to get the groceries out of the luggage basket. But where's the butter? Oh, shucks, he forgot it. Well, you'll just have to go back and get it because there isn't a speck of butter in the house and the children don't like bread without it. Well, he'll go back, and he starts off. But woman-like and wife-like, she thinks of something else for him to do. Wait a minute. Looks like shoes to be half so. Yeah, that's it. No, he doesn't like those shoes, and he doesn't want to take them back and have them half so. But you might have known, plump in the basket with the darn things and back our American husband and father starts on the family errand. But look, a bird's nest in the apple tree. Look right into it. How many eggs? One, two, three? Three. And off he goes, ending this fanciful scene which cannot happen tomorrow. And now, Mr. Sikorsky. Now you have seen our helicopter perform as a true, successful, direct lift aircraft. Well, I must repeat that there is still much to be done before it is ready for general use. Nevertheless, when it is ready, it will prove to be a new and valuable servant of mankind that will render a number of services that no other vehicle can. All our efforts right now are devoted to the developing and producing the helicopter for military use.